we're singing our song. Well, this is Mobier. This is dedicated to the gallant heroes of the Nigerian Biafra War and IPO families all over the world. I remember the Nigerian Biafra War mm-hmm. in the thickness of the Biafra genocide. Hey, one my river the vanishing of the life. Ah, uh, let the good be upon me to fight. And they were singing out. Holy, 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 holy. Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are. We are welcoming you to another exciting edition of Radio Biafra presentation due to technical reasons we are not able to render our national anthem but I do hope that before the conclusion of our broadcast this evening we should be able to play it. Therefore I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to some of you regardless of where you are domiciled and as I did promise you today is going to be an extraordinary session of our live presentation. Please, if you are not close to a listening device, I will suggest you will try and get close to one. Inform your friends, your family, your neighbors, those who are gathered around you, that they too may participate in this very wonderful program this evening. We have the prophetess with us all the way from New York, and I'll be bringing her in very shortly. But before then, as an always, we are going to hand over our proceedings to the Most High to put the Kabyama Brumi in But I must remind those who are listening, in case you're joining us for the very first time, that this is Radio Biafra. We are live and we are direct, and the whole world is listening to us across every time zone in more than 100 countries and territories around the world. People are glued to their listening device, be it satellite, be it our applications, be it the FM in Biafra land, and also those who are following live on Facebook at Martin Namdekano. 
Make sure you are at the right one. I know most of you are streaming this live also on YouTube and some people are hosting a watch party. I welcome each and every one of you. My name is Nam De Kano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra by alone on this very earth. The director of Radio Biafra. The director of Biafra Television and by the very special grace of one indivisible God in heaven. Chupokita Biyama Prumi Heninem, Elohim Adonai El Shaddai, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. We have come that freedom may prevail. We have come that Biafra may be restored. We have come that every captive in the damnable zoological republic may be set free. We have come that those that seek the truth in every way possible shall be able to find it and those of us who are better in the light of the most high shall see the glory of the restoration of Jaffa in our time that we may praise the most high very diligently in truth and in every honesty I am going to pray very shortly before I ask the prophetess to tell us what she has for us and I will even ask her if she is directed to Vice President Osiba who has been missing for a while now because her name is Osiba I welcome each and every one of you once again and we must pray. I am going to pray in English a very simple prayer. I am going to pray the Lord's Prayer. Because when Yahweh Heshua was on the faith of this very planet, he was asked Please, Rabbi, teach us how to pray. And he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we could forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. He said, he said, he said, I remember very vividly that Yeshua said, Lead us not into temptation. That temptation is a damnable zoological republic. And without any further hesitation, as a preamble to our undertaking this very evening, morning, Afternoon or night, it could even be your early evening. We are going to go to this woman of God all the way from New York to tell us what she has in store for us. She said, Elohim gave her a message and we want to listen to her. And if possible, I will be able to ask her some questions. Thank you very much, Prophetess. Can you please hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you very much. We'll start once again by you giving us your name and where you're calling from, please. My name is Robert Tesso Yetu Shiba Joe. I'm here in New York. Thank you very much. You're, you're calling us from New York? Yes, my church is Evangelism Ministry. Church of Light Evangelism Ministry in the Bronx. In the Bronx part of New York, one of the five boroughs yes, of New York. If I'm not mistaken. In the Bronx part of New York, yes. Thank you very much. And why did you decide to call me the other day when we spoke, please? Yes, on the 1st of July, I was in the bathroom when the Holy Spirit came and started giving messages of Nigeria to me. And I ran out and I quickly put my phone and I started recording it on the phone. And when I recorded it, I sent it to a friend. This is what God says. Then, I woke up on that Friday, because I did night vigil. Waking up to put on the YouTube, I just saw that, wow, this is um, Senator Madikano that is, I wanted to pass this message to again. And here is, I just saw the WhatsApp and the number. Say, God, you are great. So you want me to pass the message to him? He said, yes. He said, okay, I will do. I quickly, 
had the WhatsApp on my phone and I started texting you. This is what God says. Please, I please want prophetess, to you. before you continue, I have some few questions to ask you. Are you a Biafran? No, I'm a, I'm a Yoruba woman. I'm and a are you married to a Biafran? No, please. <laughs> no, please. Have you no, met please. me before? Never. I said I saw you on, on Friday. Uh, on I got your number on Friday on WhatsApp. Never. Because people will be wondering why would a Yoruba woman be listening to Radio Biafra and a prophetess for that matter, somebody who runs a church in New York. I will not be afraid of a message given to me. This is not the first time of giving messages. Even America knows I give messages. Please go ahead. So this is not the first time. When God sent me, I follow. God wants peace in Nigeria. And if you look at my Twitter, I'm always going there to say, God says we should be one Nigeria. We will never be divided. We are one under one umbrella. He has been saying that. I've been going on the Twitter to say that. But on Wednesday, January 1st, he gave me the breakdown of what how he wants it to be. He said Nigeria must be in four regions. The Northlands, the Biafra, the Ojujua, and the mid uh, Middle Belt. Four regions under Nigeria, he said. You are all under Nigeria. No, we are all Nigerians, but we are in our different regions. He said, I've been in our um, different regions. We can do, we can make our regions as great as we want. It's in our hands. But in each region, you still have your AP, uh, what, are, what are the names of your political parties? They are still there. We still have Atoll Rock. They are still there. We still have vice presidents. And uh, um, we have presidents and vice presidents. We still have our senate. They are still there. But the four regions will be bringing out their people. The presidents, uh, presidents, when they want to do it, if now Awusa and Yoruba are there, it will turn to the Biafra and the Middle Belt later. Because now it's like the Ojujua and the Northerners, which they call the Puas, that is Fulanese and Awusas. They are the one that they call the Puas, which is Northerners. The Puas, which are not on us, the Ojutuas, the Biafra, and the Middle Belt. Nigeria should be in those four regions. We have our president, we have a vice president, that when it comes to your region to pick yours, it will be your region. Picking it, you will pick the best candidates you want and you can trust that it will not go and disgrace your region when it gets to when it gets there. People you know they are they, they are they can do it. So each region with their political party will pick who they will do it among themselves to pick their candidates. And they will go every four years, no two times. That is what God says. No two times. They will be rotating it between the four regions. If you if a region brings presidents out, the other one will bring vice presidents out. And then we will have what we call the federal and the state tax. Each region and state will take your tax. But there will be federal tax. What will be the federal tax doing? The federal tax will govern the affairs of the four regions. So the president and the vice president still controls Nigeria. You want to have your money, and have your money. What do you mean by you want if to have you your money? You mean if I want to have my Biafra currency? Is that what you're saying? If you have your Biafra currency, have your Jujua currency. But when it comes to interacting, you will still be using Naira. Naira still stands. Whatever you do in your region, we don't care. But Naira still stands. You will use Naira to communicate with other regions. So Naira still has its power. And Naira will still be used internationally. So whatever you are doing in your region, 
as you as region you may have your heads that will come out and always speak to the vice president and uh, to the presidents and the vice presidents all the time it will not be crowd and in every region they are governors will control each state as they are under the region and then as the government controls they still have one person it's not president it's not so a what, you're, what you are talking about in effect if i understand you correctly yes is the form of restructuring is that correct exactly nigeria i i want everybody to, will be happy yes Yes, I'm coming. I, I, I gave you this opportunity to be able to speak to the whole world because I allow that I believe in democracy and not just freedom of speech, but divergence of opinion and of thought. Yes. Um, I don't want people to be hearing just the voice of those of us who are campaigning vociferously for an independent state of Biafra. Now, there are some questions I want to ask you because to me, it seems to me, considering what we have to analyze this evening and go through, that whatever you may have seen could be referring to the past. Because I have here in front of me the text of what transpired at Haburi. And what transpired at Haburi involved involved quite a lot of people and i will tell you right now this very minute the names of those that went to aburi to discuss this same thing that you're talking about and then if it is the will of god as you said it is that there should be a division into four regions now my question is why didn't it happen then but i'm going to come to that in a minute I want to let you understand that what you're talking about has been tried in the past. Exactly what you're saying. No, I don't even know. No, I'm telling, I even know. I, I, I'm telling you now that's happened. It is here. I have it here. And I want it to be posted. This is a transcript from the tape of the recording in Aburi. We are exactly what you're saying now, prophetess. What you're saying now was discussed. Between January 5 and January 7, 1967. Wow. The reason why I'm bringing this up is that what you saw is not out of place. That maybe God was showing you how Nigeria could have been had they become themselves in the late 60s. Now, um, let me tell you those who went to discuss exactly what you're telling us tonight. Those who were there were the, the Lieutenant General Joe Ankara who is the host, the then uh, head of state of Ghana, Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowon, the chief of army staff, who announced himself as the supreme commander when Hiroshi went missing in Yoruba land, in a, in, a, in a battle, when he was being hosted by Fadi. Lieutenant Colonel Ogme Gojuku, who was the military governor then of eastern Nigeria, Colonel Robert Adeyinka Adebayo, the military governor of Western Nigeria, Lieutenant Colonel Hassan Katsina, military governor of Northern Nigeria, Lieutenant Colonel David Ejo, military governor of Western Nigeria, Major Mobolaji Johnson, the military governor of Lagos, and also Al Haji Khan Salem, the deputy inspector general of police, also present where Mr. T. Omo Bari and also Commodore Akimwole Wei, the chief of naval staff. This is to tell you, prophetess, that everybody the Nigeria are talking about, they assembled all of them. From 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 Fulani or how that Fulani as the case may be, from Yoruba, from the Midwest, and from Biafra. Everybody gathered to discuss this thing you're saying in Ghana between the fifth of January to the 7th of January of 1967. Now, they discuss all the things that you saw in your vision or in your message. All of that had been discussed in the past. They discussed it. They sat down and they agreed that there will be devolution of power to the various regions within the country. 
Now I want you to go back and ask God why did it not happen in 1967? Can I answer that? Please do. God's time is the best in everything we are doing in life. No man has the power of God. You may want it that time. It is not yet right for God to manifest it. When it involves God, it will surely stand. No one wins God. When it comes to God, when you say God saves, no matter who you are, you have to bow under that umbrella. And who do, whoever don't wants to listen to it, God himself will deal with them. The one you are saying in 1960s, and which I don't even know about, God is my witness. This one came July 1st. I stand by the throne. The God who calls me. I, I did not, not know. But I'm, I'm not disputing what you're saying. Uh, I, I'm just telling you that yes. it is God's time. Yes. I, I, now, now, I want to know that are you aware that there are Yoruba people, Oduduwa people, I prefer to call them, there are Oduduwa people in Benin Republic in Dahomey. Is that correct? And, uh, this is true. You just say it. I'm just a woman of God to give a message of God. No, because I want to know, because what I'm trying to understand is that I want you to be able to perhaps, you will come back again. You will go back again and go back to, to God and say to God, but this happened in 67 uh, and 5 million people died as a result of it. Because this wanted to happen and they killed 5 million people in order to make this type of Nigeria you are talking about now not to happen. Now, what I want to know is, there are Yoruba people, or do, sorry, Oduduwa people in Bene Republic which is nearby to us, the Republic. Now, what I, the reason why I have slight difficulties with this is this. Before the white man came, the Yoruba, the Oduduwa people, we are all one people, from Kogi all the way to, to present day Dahomey, Bene Republic, all one people. They speak the same Yoruba language, or should I say Oduduwa language. There was no problem. Now, the gold in heaven, they worship Oluwa, no problem. Now the white man came, or should I say Europeans came, and divided the Yoruba nation into two. Now you have a part of them, not divided by, not designed by God, now you have a part of Yoruba people in the Republic, and you have another set of Yoruba people in Nigeria. Now yes. what I'm asking is, is that why would God before create an entire Yoruba race. And then all of a sudden, ask the white man to come and cut them into two. The white man came and cut them into two. And instead of the Yoruba to go back and look for their people and have one beautiful, big Yoruba nation that stands present day by the Republic and Nigeria. Why would Yoruba just confine themselves to Nigeria? Knowing fully well that we try this thing you're suggesting now that God told you about in 67. And 5 million people died. What makes you to believe that people will not die again if they try it? They will never. It's only the enemies that will die. Those who are stubborn, who don't want to listen to God, they are the one he will face. Me, I'm just a servant. I know. And this is not the first time I will give a message. I am just a servant. And when he sent me, how he will do it is none of, is none of my business. I'm I just a servant. I how he will you. do it, how he will face the stubborn enemy, what he will do to make it stand. Me, he just told me July 1st. I don't know what is happening before. Yes. So I am saying what God is saying. Mm. And how the peace of Nigeria will stand. This is what he sent me to come out to say. And I am saying it. Whoever wants to come and confront me for saying it. No, nobody's confronting you. No, no, no. It is I the, am not yes. afraid of them because this is the word of God. He said there should be no war in Nigeria because he said so many people have bought ammunition to kill innocent ones. He said they will face themselves and destroy themselves. He has given the four regions under Nigeria. 
if what? we did not yes. get it in 1957 as mm. you say mm. it was not yet god's time and, no, and what is stopping it from happening what is why do we need to fight for it this because a lot of people buy a lot of God, a lot of respected people are talking about a man that I have very much regard for, Paya the Banjo. They are discussing it. People are talking, they've been talking these are respectable elderly elder statesmen who are who saw what happened in sixty seven. And most of them are good to our people and they're talking about it now. Why if it is the will of God, why wouldn't it just happen? Why do we need to uh, agitate or fight for it? I don't understand. Okay. Hold on. The way God works is beyond anyone's comprehension. His ways are not our ways. The way He will do this, all He's telling those of uh, those who are ready for war, is that don't fight. You will do it amicably. Those in the Biafras will bring their elders like you to come and talk. The Ojibwe's will bring their own. The middle birds will bring their own. The northerners will bring their own. Anyone who don't want to listen but still wants to give us war in Nigeria will face themselves. According to Second Chronicles 20. Look at Second Chronicles 20. When they want to come and face the Israelites, what did God do? He said, you'll be praising me. And he, they face themselves. They destroy themselves. He said, enough of blood shedding in Nigeria. Enough. There must be love and unity. And we should all be under the same umbrella. They may try it in 1967 because that was of men, not of God. Uh, but the same way they tried it in 67 was the same way that Nigeria was created by a man, not by Don't a God. Don't worry. This is God speaking. Because you don't know me. No, 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 no. I, I brought into the program to give an alternative view. I don't want the world to think that we don't allow alternative views on this platform. I want people that have alternative views to come along. That's why you're speaking to us. You, I am telling you this is of God. When things are of God, He knows how He will start it from the beginning to the end. But write it down. Nigeria was in four regions and we have free movements among ourselves thank you very, if, thank you very much sorry, let me let, let me professor i'm just going to say this you are absolutely right that you in your vision you saw four regions and those four regions they we are intermingling everybody was visiting everybody else because all the four regions will be in echoes and in Ecowas, anybody can, you know, actually, you can walk up and travel to Liberia. You can travel to Katsina. You can travel to, to Obama Show. You can travel to Ibano. Nobody will stop you. But yes. where I have problems, which is why I want you to go to, you're a prayerful woman. I want you to go back to God and ask for clarification. Because, because you saw four regions, which is the breaking up of Nigeria, which is absolutely correct because that very autonomy you're talking about under Nigeria, which is now what diplomats are saying all over the world is what they want. That they don't want Nigeria to break. They want Nigeria of four regions, everybody doing their own thing, but your name will still be Nigeria. What I want you to go back to God, to ask God is this. If it is God's will, how come God gave powers to people that will always say no to it? Why? I, I don't understand. If, if it is God's will, why would God always, through the British, give powers to the Fulani that would always say no to it? Why? That was the main day. Men are ruling. Men are ruling. When God intervened in a thing, it was still... It, this is no vision. Now. He spoke in voice to me. I had it when he was telling me. I quickly picked the phone. If it's vision... I agree, I agree with you. I am not this doubting is you. Spoken voice. You too will receive it. Father, feel your son to see what, what you told us. Uh, uh, so that he will calm down to get it right. He said, now, get now, that what, the I, I'm coming. When you spoke before, you said that, you said something about IPOB and this very agitation. 
that God, what was God's purpose for this very IPOB agitation? I want to know. That was something you said. Are you saying that IPOB came to fight for everybody, not just for Biafra alone? That was the way you put it. No, I was telling you that you are fighting for Biafra. Yes. That the way God has given the vision, you don't have to fight for Biafra. Fight for Nigeria to be what God says it should be. A, 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 a country with four you know, uh, regions and everybody, they are in peace, harmony, love. I, as a Yoruba, can come and live in Biafra State with no problem. I can buy houses and be doing my business. Tomorrow morning, no doubt. So it mm. is where everybody is. We, we're doing business together. The joy of the Lord it is there with everyone. We are happy to call ourselves Nigerians. Yeah, that, 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 that is the only is. point of departure we have, and that is why I said I will go back to God. Please. I will also go back to God. Because I, I, uh, no, no, I want to explain please. something to you. If, if it wasn't God's um, plan in 67, and because it wasn't God's plan, 5 million people were killed as a result of restructuring. Now, what made it to also fail again in 2014? When Jonathan called for the confab and the families worked out, they didn't want it. So I keep, I keep wondering, you know, if it is, if this very matter is God's will, how come in 67, 5 million people died because of it? Not to break away, Ojuku wasn't breaking away from Nigeria. Ojuku, as this very transcript proves to everybody, was for regional decentralization, autonomy for the regions. Now, it's 5 million died. Again, in 2014, in 20, in, even before then, they've had a series of confabs. People from the south, by which I mean Odudua and Biafra, they canvassed for regionalization, exactly what God showed you, and the Fulani said no. So this is about the fourth time that they have said no. If somebody got them round the table and they said no, Wole Sherika has been campaigning for sovereign national conference, maybe to give birth to these very um, um, four nations you're talking about. And it never worked. So I am wondering in what order is God going to send angels from heaven to come and tell the foreigners that this is his will. I don't I don't understand it. That's why I said you should go back to God and ask him. I don't need to, to go back to God. My my God always talked once. He has never repeated itself twice. The God I serve is the Almighty King, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Of course, of course. He no has doubt never made that. a mistake. Mm. It's not a God you question. It is not the God you question. No, we are not questioning God. We are he saying that the Almighty King, yes. when He says yes, it's yes, it's yes, and it's no, it's no. He said yes now. Okay, He has said yes now. So God will now speak yes to the now. Islamic people. He will, that is why we're trying okay. to come. Everyone that is angry down, calm down. Let God take his place. Those who have been studying you, no, 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 no. He is God. He knows how to wipe them out. Okay, so, so, so we are now hoping that God will wipe away the full army by because that is problem. By the time you go together, He will wipe off their stubbornness. Okay. Okay. He will visit them in his own way. He will show himself as God to them. That stubbornness, he will wipe it out. When, 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 when that stubbornness, they, they, in my village, they're in my land, though. The stubbornness, they're waiting for, oh, for don't God. Worry, that, 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 everything will be stopped now. Okay. All those things cannot work again. God has spoken July 4th. We are just in July 5th. Let us see his move and his power. He is God. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very, very much. Please stay on the line. Don't go away. Stay on the line, please. Do not go away. Stay where you are, please. Stay where you are. Um, that was the prophetess. Uh, I think it is Adetu to Shiba. Is that correct? Oye Tutu. Oye Tutu. I'm very, very sorry. I do apologize. Oye Tutu. Adebajo. Who saw a vision? The reason why I brought her to the program is that Biafra is going to be a democracy. Biafra is going to be where people will have divergent views. We don't all need to agree all the time on any particular issue. That was why I brought her in, because the world needs to know 
that this very platform is democratic enough to allow divergent views to be heard. That is the type of Biafra we are fighting for and we are seeking to build. Now, we know that our God, the God we serve, is not a God of confusion. Uh -huh. This is not a God that will mislead or lead people astray or kill his children just for the fun of it. Now, if in 67, 5 million people died, and all through the years, confab after confab after confab, never yielded any results, the Fulanis always walk away. I am now at a pain to understand on what basis God will allow something that He did not create to continue to exist. Because God created the Duduwa. That is why if you go online now and you type in, that was why I pleaded with you to allow your daughter to do some research for us. But we have listeners all over the world and we want them to do this research. Now, this is how you know the nations that God actually created. It's very simple. What you need to do is that you go online, you can go to Google if you want. Now, I want to, as I'm talking to you, I am typing into Google. I want to ask God in heaven, uh, uh, who created Oduduwa? Who created Oduduwa? Oduduwa is older than, than even Britain. So I want to ask God, who created Oduduwa? Very, very simple. If you type it down, you will see that Oduduwa descended, descended from God himself. That is according to their folklore. Nobody created Oduduwa. The same thing, if you type in who created, who created, maybe uh, uh, who created England. Let us say England, for example. Who created, I want, what I want to say is that what you saw was what God said. But the timing is not actually um, I'm very clear, which is why I want to go back to God and ask him, who created England? I'm asking. Ask yourselves again, who created England? Once again, this is how you know the nations that God created. If you type who created England, you will see that nobody created England. They will tell you about who succeeded who, who came in, the same thing for Russia, for Germany, for every ancient kingdom, even Ethiopia. Ask yourself, who created Ethiopia? Nobody. Now, let us go and ask ourselves, who created Nigeria? This is why it is a man-made object. And why God cannot be speaking for a man-made object. I want to ask, who created Nigeria? If you want to know who created Nigeria, immediately you go into Google. It will tell you, Lord Lugard created Nigeria 104 years ago. You see my point? Lord Lugard, Lugard created Nigeria. And I want you to go and ask yourself, who created Hausa people? Who created Hausa? For instance, this I'm telling you the, the nation that God Almighty built, not man. Who created Who created Hausa people? Who created them? Who created Hausa? Let us go and check who created Hausa people. Nobody created Hausa people. It was founded. There's a difference between founding a nation and creating one. If you go now and ask your Google who created Oduduwa, you will not see any human being. Never. If you ask who created Biafra, you cannot see any. If you ask who created uh, uh, um, Hausa, you cannot see any. Even if you ask who created Somali, you cannot see any. But once you say who created Nigeria, you will see a man's name appear. In other words, they are assuming the position of God Almighty. Only God can create a nation. So, in my conclusion, how I saw your vision, my personal opinion, is that your vision is about the division of Nigeria. Not, not bringing it under any one, because God did not create Nigeria. I have proven it now that God never created Nigeria. But God created Hausa. God created Oduduwa. God created um, Tizi, God created uh, uh, Biafra, God created all these people. You can never hear a person say, I created this very place. Only God can create a nation and not man. That is why Nigeria cannot survive. Not out of hatred for anybody, heaven knows. And as you quite rightly said, in 
a divided Nigeria. Everybody can go. You are in America. I, I'm sure you own a house in America. Your church is, is in Bronx. You own a, a church in Bronx. Is anybody going to demolish it tomorrow? Is anybody going to deny you your house tomorrow? The same thing. I said in Biafra land. We will even go to Oduduwa land, Yoruba, to go and bring. If you're paying your people uh, fifty thousand dollars a year equivalent, we will pay them eight if they are good. We will, we will head on to them and bring them down to Biafra land to work for us. That is the type of nation we are going to build. Not a nation based on parental interest. If we see in the upper land, if we know there is a, a house engineer that is very good, that can do something, believe you me, we will go and bring him in to come to the upper land to work for us. That is the type of nation we are going to build. And that is why I welcome your call this very day. I thank you very much. Hold on, let me quickly say one thing. Please go ahead. Go ahead. You said you want to take the affair out of Nigeria. Please, as a woman of God, I don't want to talk too much because those who know me in America, they know the message that I'm giving and they find out everything was like that. I just want to tell you, don't fight against God. God. Now I'm asking That's you, how can God, how can God please, allow? Hold on. No, 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 he will reveal himself to you. People are listening and we need clarity. He will, he will reveal himself to you okay. after we have finished this discussion. Okay, he is God. He is not a liar. And the way you will go out to do it and still be a Biafra region, he will tell you. He is God. Nobody wants as independent you. You are nothing without God by your back. Of course. If women being said they will support you, they can die overnight before they say they want to support you. That is but true. with God, He is your power. He is your strength. He is the one that can make you achieve what you want to do. So if God says, I say, nobody contradicts God. That is why. But the father is saying that God said that she will no, 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 no. There, there will be. They are not God. No, but that is why they are God. So I need to to appeal to you. They are not God. I want you. You are a Christian. I want you to honor God, respect God, believe in Him, trust Him. He's not a liar. Whatever He says, He will complete it until the end. You, as a woman, being let me tell you, those who said I've been doing it since 1967, they were under a race. They are, are not under grace. But I don't know how that grace. Uh, I don't know how it's going to you, appear hold on, again. Hold on, please. I just want to respond to this. Then we are under a race as woman being trying to make sure it stands. But now, grace, God is involved now. Because between grace and grace is God. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I will man. be with you. I agree with if you. But how can, why won't, uh, uh, Professor, please hold on, please, man. Hold on. Why would God divide your land into two? Put one in, um, in the uh, Republic and the other one in Nigeria. Why? Why would he do that? By God is by God. That has been done. We are Nigerian. By God is by God. You understand me? But I and have been able to, to prove to you now that God never you know, is But I'm, God lives in Nigeria. Look at this. You know, I am so I am I am used to it as a woman of God. Mm. Even when I'm speaking in the midst of big men of God, mm. they attack me. I'm used to it. No, 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 nobody. I, oh, I, I I see, for I it. nobody can attack you. Nobody no, they, is attacking they you. They contradict it. No, no, no. But nobody I always say, wait and see. When it comes to God. We will all see and we will know it is God who spoke. Thank you very it much. It was a said time. God will be with you. And we you too. And you too. And I, I look forward to welcoming you back on this very platform and remain blessed. Remain blessed. Thank you very, very much. Remain blessed. People are now calling from everywhere, all over the world. This, the program this evening, we have our live interactive sessions mostly on Fridays. I allowed our mother in the Lord, so to speak, to come and tell us the part of her vision that I accepted was the division into four. Not the other one, still under uh, Nigeria. No. Maybe it was when God was taking away all the green, white, green flag. 
She may have seen green, white, green, but it wasn't God at all, at all, because I've proven it here. God cannot, our prophet has said that what transpired in 1967 was the work of men. If we accept it was the work of men, that the Almighty God doesn't validate the works of men, then there is no way God can validate something created by a man. It's a very simple experiment. I want everybody to go to Google and type in in Google who created Ududua? Who created Biafra? One after the other. All the ancient kingdoms you know. Who created them? In fact, if, who created USA? That is very recent. Who created Canada? You can never see a human being's name. But I want you to go and type in who created Nigeria. What you will see is Lord Lugard created Nigeria 104 years ago. Now, if God doesn't respect the timetable of man, why would God validate something that a man made? Why would God divide something he made to do? Into two. Put a part of them in the Republic and he didn't do it, it was man that did it. The French and the British that cut the Yoruba land into two. One in the Republic and the other one in Nigeria. How can God do that to his people? And then put them together with um, uh, half Arabs from, uh, from Bruno? How is that possible? I, I just want to know. I don't think um, the vision was complete. But you will go, I'm just going to come back to us. She will come back to us. As somebody said, uh, we are not wishing for anybody to lose their child to Fulani Headsmen. I want the world to understand that we take divergent views here. We don't need people who always agree with us. Sometimes it is good to test ourselves against those who don't agree with us and be able to give them the platform to be able to preach that conviction which they have. We must proceed. And as being part of our program this very evening, we are making it abundantly clear to all those who are willing to listen, to everybody who is willing to listen, that those of you entertaining or harboring the intention of scaring uh, um, Nigeria towards the path of devolution, or should I say regional autonomy, that that ship has sailed. We are no longer there again. We are no longer there again. We cannot have it. Do you know why? As I'm sure that Abuya Accord has been published. If you go and read it right now on my page, you, and not, the, not, not the outcome, I'll publish the outcome next week. What I wanted to do today was to go into the corruption in the zoo. But I discovered that this uh, prophetess rang and said she had something to say. And I said to her, I want you to say this to the hearing of the whole world. And she just did. What we are now going to do is to proceed very cautiously towards this very lecture that we have this evening. It centers around her conviction that the zoo should be won, which I vehemently disagree with. Because of a simple thing that she said. She said that 67 was the work of men. I think there's another confab in 19... Was it 1984 or thereabouts? Was that the work of men? Yes, I agree. Also, the work of men... Let me use, use recent one. Not the Abacha one. Abacha called the conference as well. Let's use the most recent one. 2014. 2014 of Jonathan. Jonathan's confab. So, it was the work of men in 67. Work of men in 84. The work of men in 2014. But Nigeria was created by a man. Now, how can God preserve the creation of a man, which is Nigeria, but say no to when men are trying to carry out that same vision that he shows to our dear sister? That's what I don't understand. That's the only place where I am having a slight confusion. Because Nigeria is artificial, it is man-made, and that is why we must try all we can to make sure that it no longer exists. There will be four nations emerging 
That is the part of her prophecy that I want us to take away. And all these people will cooperate. Their families will go back to, to the Jaron where they came from. The houses can travel, mingle, and stay wherever they like. The Middle Belt nation will mingle and do whatever they like. The same thing with Oduduwa and also Biafra as well. One thing we are not going to have is a monolithic, unwielding, irredeemable zoo called Nigeria. It cannot happen. Never, ever, ever. Now, it may be that all these four nations emerging will decide to come together and negotiate to form a union. That is their prerogative. Maybe that is where she's going to. That these four newly emerged nations from the contraption that Lugard concocted and built may now decide to come together to form a new nation. That is entirely up to them. The people will vote and the people will decide. That is how it's going to be. From here on in, what we decide is what the people want. Because they said the voice of the people is the voice of God. We cannot say God cannot speak to one person. God speaks to a lot of people. So that is why they say vox pupili, vox di, which means the voice of the people is the voice of God. Not the voice of one person, but the voice of the people. And the people are saying they are tired. Or do the words are saying that they want to be free. The Yoruba say, do we want to be free? The other that say we want to be free. Middle Belt wants to be free. How is that underburden wants to be free? Because they went and everything our dear sister was saying, the prophetess, everything she is saying, Ujupu discussed at Aburi. Everything, absolutely everything. Everything. Ujupu argued. For decentralization. They came back. The, the conference finished between the 7th and the 10th. People must note this down. Between the 7th and the 10th of January of 1967. In Ghana. They held this um, um, summit. And they agreed. Now remember that the war broke out in Ojuku declared Biafra on the 30th of May. I want people and historians to note this very, very carefully. I want to put to bed all the misinformation and the lies surrounding the emergence of Biafra. Very, very critical we understand this. According to this very documentation, this very document, now posted on my wall, if you go there, it doesn't originally belong to me, it was published by Godwit.org. The man that put this very I sorry it was from the fifth I do I do apologize, from the fifth to the seventh of January nineteen sixty seven. Follow the timeline very carefully. They went to Aburi and they agreed. Ojuku came back, waited for that January, waited for February, March, April, and May and May. Are you following me? January, Gowa didn't implement the restructuring of Nigeria, no. February, they no restructuring. March, no restructuring. April, no restructuring. Until the end of May, pure five solid months waiting for a gentleman's agreement that was reached in Aburi to implement it. And they said no. Before Ojuku declared Biafra on the 30th of May. Having attended Aburi between the 5th and the 7th of January. But your historians never tell you this. Those who claim that they are historians, they never tell you this. Never, ever, ever. They never tell you this. Ojuku waited for five months, waiting for Gowan to implement Aburi. Because Britain said no. Because the Janjaweed, the Fulani Janjaweed said no. Go on remained on a on a body for five months, not implemented before Jubu declared Biafra. And now you understand the history very well, and all their lies. That is why their lies can never stand the scrutiny of time. Their lies can never ever stand. 
Because what people fail to understand is this. What people fail to acknowledge is this. That the devil is using the cloak of Nigeria to advance his cause. Because it was the devil that built Nigeria. It was the devil that used a very horrible man to create Nigeria. Not God. God never created Nigeria. Not for one second. Because had God created Nigeria, you will not see the name Lord Lugard created Nigeria 104 years ago. And if you remain in Nigeria, in Nigeria, once you remain in Nigeria, your Lord is saying, I want to tell you what the Fulani, what the houses are going to, at the hands of the Fulani people. So you understand it very well. And I thought of that by now. By now, we would have had people interpreting what I'm saying and letting the whole world of Hausa speakers and hearers understand the importance of this very message. Now, listen very carefully. Sokoto used to be called Gobe, belonged to Hausa people. The foreigners traveled and came from all over the place, and Futo Jalom, to be very precise, came and they pleaded with, they said to the Hausa people, let's trade together. Let's be one. This them one Nigeria. I want you to understand very carefully. They came. After a while, they defeated the Hausa people with the help of Hausa people. I was speaking to a very important personality. I wouldn't, I mean, yeah, important personality yesterday. And you know what he told me? He said, I went to the north. He's from Middle Belt. He said, I went to the north. You know that thing they call Dover? If you like, you can Google it. You know Dover they have when the Emir or the, you know, like, it's like a Ophala in the north. The Ophala of the north. The Ophala, they said our FM is not working. What, what is it supposed to be? Why, why is our FM not working, for goodness sake? Why is it not working, I ask? Oh, goodness me. Goodness me. Now, there is something called Durban. D-U-R-B-A. Durban Festival. Not Durban. Durban. D-U-R-B-A-R. It is celebrated around Ramadan. It is a Muslim holiday in the north. I want anybody to go to Durban in the north. You will see the light skin. That same thing, you know, about black lives matter. You will see light skinned mongrels, that is the Fulanese, on top of a camel or a horse. They are the royal family. And you will see Hausa peasants following them on foot, doing Rankadebe. Not their fellow Fulanese, but Hausa people. Because they conquered. They conquered Hausa people. And how was it possible that a minority, the same thing you know, is, how was it possible for a minority, a few Fulanese, moving cattle from place to place to conquer a people with an envious civilization in Africa, like the Hausa people? How was that possible? They did it by doing what they do now. They divide you and they tell you they're bringing you something better, they're going to fight corruption, they're going to institute a purer form of Islam that will take you closer to God and you lose your land in the process. That was how the Hausa people lost Sokoto. That was how they lost Ibn Kano. They lost Katsina. They lost Kebi. They lost uh, Zazaru. Everywhere they lost. Do you know how they lost it? They lost it because they campaigned against their own people. I am saying this because of the few Ebulefus who think that by fighting the Afra, that somehow, or talking rubbish, that they are making their lives better. They are preparing themselves for, for conquest. Themselves and their children and those unborn. Do you know what is happening today? I want anybody to tell me if this is a lie. The Sultan of Sokoto, where is he from? He's a full army man. He is a Sultan in a land that belongs to house of people. How about the Emir of Khan, which is the heartbeat of um, Hausa people? He is a Fulani. How about the Emir of Bandu? He is Fulani, not Hausa. How about the Emir of Kirby? He is Fulani, not Hausa. How about the Emir even of the Lorraine in Yoruba land? 
he is not a Yoruba man. The Emir of a Loring is not even a Yoruba Muslim or Ududuwa Muslim. The Emir of a Loring is Fulani, not Yoruba. Not um, Ududuwa. The Emir of Zazaro is Fulani, not Hausa. The governor of Sokoto State is Fulani, not Hausa. The whereas the Hausa is in the majority, oh, the governor of Kasina State is Fulani, not Hausa. Governor of Zamfara State is Fulani, not Hausa. Governor of Kanuna State is Fulani, not Hausa. Governor of Kali State is Fulani, not Hausa. Governor of Jigawa State is Fulani, not Hausa. Governor of Bombay State is Fulani, not Hausa. Governor of Kebe State is Fulani, not Hausa. Governor of Tarawa State is Fulani, not Christian, nor Hausa. Governor of Nasarawa State is Fulani, not Hausa. The Governor of Brown State is Fulani, not even Kanuri. All the major imams in the core Sharia Arewa zone in the Sahel in the north, they are all Fulanese. There is no frontline imam that is a Hausa man. Now, do you understand? Now, do you understand what they have in store for you? The more they preach one Nigeria under one unity, the more they enter into you and take you over. They came to Imo State. They could not impose a foreign man in Imo State. They got the next best thing, which is Opus and Man. They are stooge and they are slave. They are stooge and they are slave. Such people can never have out in this life and or have our respect. It's impossible. You have come to do us harm. You are working for the enemy. You have come to destroy the children of light. You can never, ever, ever, ever earn or deserve or merit our respect. All the emirs in all the core northern states are all Fulanese, not Hausa. Because the Fulanese killed all the Hausa kings, killed all the high chiefs, and replaced all Hausa kings with Fulani, either as a sultan or as an emir. There was a genocide in the north as well. The first victims of Fulani genocide were the houses. The second victims of Fulani genocide were the Nupe people. The third victims of Fulani genocide are the Oduduwa people, the Yoruba, the Oduduwa people. And the fourth victim were their friends. The fifth victim is now the TV people, those in the middle belt. That's how they roll. And they are managing to do all these things before when they were slaughtering the other people or their kings with the help of their fellow uh, 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 with the with help of the, of the Hausa peasants. They said they were bringing you a better Islam. Fighting corruption. When that was finished, they now came down to the new place, slaughtered them. We are bringing you better Islam. When they went into a little land, slaughtered them in the morning and took their land until the Yoruba, the Alassin of our of young, ran into the forest because the full army cavalry, that is men, fighting men on the back of a horse, could not fight in a tropical region. That was the only thing that saved the Ududuwa kingdom, the Yoruba race. If not by now, they will be like the Lauren people. Do you understand it? Do you understand? They tried it in a gala, they succeeded. As I said the other time. Do you understand the mess you're in? All of you toying with this one Nigeria garbage. Do you see the mess you are storing up for your children? All of you should go and write a book, a memoir, saying, oh, I wanted to be in one Nigeria. The families are coming. Because those who ignore history have a way of repeating it. That's what I've always argued from day one. If you ignore what happened to the Hausa people, what happened to the Biron people, what happened to the Nupe people, what happened to the Bashama people, what happened to the Baji people, what happened to the Yoruba people, you also will be consumed. You will be swallowed. 
and our history in the next 50, 60 years will be that of the history of Hausa people. That owns Sokoto. Yet, there is nothing there for them. Is that the type of life you want for yourself and your children? Is that what you want? Now you understand what you are fighting for, or should I say, what we are fighting against. The time now is two minutes past 8 p.m. in the evening in the blessed land of Biafra. The same number of minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are. And the person who kindly composed this very <laughs> damage the families have done to the houses is Okolo Vincent, and I thank him very much for that. He titled it The Bitter Truth. And I want to be published everywhere. That, so when you're talking about uh, one Nigeria, let's have one Nigeria, let's uh, have one Nigeria and have regions in. I want you to know what awaits you and your people. This is how the devil works. This is the work of the they will blind you, the devil will blind you. So you can no longer see very clearly. So you can no longer see clearly. These are the things that you must understand. Please, our, you shouldn't, some of you should not speak ill of the prophet. That was the vision that she saw. And she's within her rights to share it with the rest of the world. That is why democracy and freedom of speech is a very good thing. You demolish people with the strength of your argument. The superiority of the reasons and the way you marshal them. Please, she is more than entitled to her opinion. If you say that God created Nigeria, you ask Google, who created Nigeria? It's only if you're telling me that a white man is God, if you're telling me that Lugard is God, then I'll believe you. Because it's there, in black and white. Who created Nigeria? Lugard did, in, in 104 years ago. That tells you all you need to know. If you don't want to be like the Hausa people, if you don't want to be, if you don't want the faith that befell house of people to befall you, then you must campaign to go back to where you come from. Everybody must. How? Where were you when before the white man came? Who were you? What sort of political union did you have before Lugard came and named you Nigeria? Who were you? Or are you trying to denigrate your history? Are you trying to, to dismiss who you were, your identity? Then when a white man treats you bad, he starts complaining about racism. When you yourself, you have no regard for who you are. You have no regard for your history. How then can you expect somebody else to have regard for you when you have no regard for yourself? Very, very important. People are calling from everywhere. We take calls only on Friday mornings, please. The rest of the time we lecture. I may be in the mood, I may be a bit generous, and allow a lot of people to speak later on as we proceed. But it is very, very important that people understand what we are passing through. We don't expect everybody to support what we are doing and the way we are doing it. That would be very, very foolish of us. No, not at all. But you better have a very valid reason. Because we have a thousand and one reasons as to why we do things the way we do them. That is why we are potent. That is why for anybody to be relevant, you must mention our name. If you don't mention our name, they can, or IPOB or Biafra. Nobody will know you are there. You are irrelevant. You are inconsequential. For you to be relevant, there are three names you must mention. You must mention IPOB. You must mention Biafra. You must mention Mazen Nam the channel. If you don't mention any of these three, you are nobody. You cannot generate traffic. Nobody will know who you are. That is the strength of the whole we have over you. That is how strong we are. That is why I keep saying we don't expect everybody to support Biafra agitation. Some people will behave like Hausa peasants. They will see things that are coming, but they cannot read it until it's too late. That is why today you have a handful of Fulani people ruling and subjugating Hausa people. That is why they made them ginger with they made them alamaji. That is how sad things are. Unless you want that type of future for your people, then you must support 
this very agitation led by IPOB. Because earlier today I had a meeting with very important people in our land. Very, very important. You know, people have views and opinions. And I allow people to hold whatever view or opinion that they feel comfortable to hold. It is entirely up to them, their prerogative. You cannot separate somebody from the views or the opinions that they have within them. That was why earlier today, before I came on air, I was in a meeting with some very important people. They had some things to say to me, and I also had some things to say to them. And I'm glad to say that in the end, we came to an amicable understanding about the best way for us to proceed. But there are a few standout things that came out of that very meeting. One is that there is unanimity that the consumption of cow meat in our land must stop. If you have not seen the videos or pictures of Fulani men having sex with cattle, please go and have a look at it. And to encourage our people all over the world to please invest. We are not just supremely talented, but we are blessed. We are a blessed race. If we put our heart and our minds towards animal husbandry in the area of um, cattle, we will do very well. And I want our people to go into it. We are winding down our consumption of cow meat. Let us see the reason and excuse that we have to come into our land to slaughter our people at will. To slaughter our people at will. That is not going to happen. It will not happen. So we are running down the clock on the consumption of cow meat. Very, very important that we pay attention. The more cow meat you eat, the more you are not just endangering your life, you are putting the rest of our people in jeopardy. Because if nobody buys their cattle, they will not come. Very, very important you understand this. Please. That was one of the major outcomes of our gathering today. And they we are concerned, and rightfully so, I presume, about how we respond to those who disagree with us. They want us to take it easy on those who disagree with us. And I said to them that I will do everything within my powers to ensure that that is the case. And there are people that we are the ones who are hurt. Because we are the ones that they conspired against to kill. They came to kill us. They conspired to kill us. But unfortunately for them, not all of us were killed. So we, I have taken on board what they have said because they are men and women that I have a lot of respect for. And going forward, we shall seek a very amicable way for those who may disagree with us in public to be able to voice their opinion without antagonizing those of us who are in very massive pain. That was my assurance to them going forward and we intend to keep it. We intend to keep it. No consumption of cow meat in our land. It is going to be phased. It's something we are used to from childhood. So it's going to take a while for those local farmers um, to be able to bring their meat on board. Very, very important, please. Now, those who are complaining that we insult them, that we are not very respectful, should look at what is happening in the north. So look at what happened in the dual land. And understand that if you have a contrary opinion about Biafra, if you don't believe in IPOB and Biafra agitation, please keep your mouth shut. Because if you voice your opinion, and we consider that your opinion to be an insult, then you will not be spared. So the best thing for you to do is to just shut up. Keep serving your janja with your Fulani masters, and nobody will talk about you. But any day you come out to say any garbage against IPOB or Biafra, 
you will be torn to pieces. Keep your mouth shut and nobody will talk about you. Keep your mouth shut and there will be no problem. And if you claim you are a leader, you must stand up and speak when your people are imperiled, when your people are in danger, when your people are being persecuted. That is why you are a leader. You must stand up and say something. You must condemn it. Not when the people are dying, you don't say anything. And when your people are agitating to be free, you go and connive with the enemy to kill them. We have every right to be upset. Every right to be angry. But of course, we do understand where we come from and the need to be circumspect. And that was what I assured them. And I said I would say it live on air. That we will take it easy on some people. We will try to respect our institutions and our traditions. But please, do not encroach into our territory. We are hurting, we are pained, we want Biafra, and nothing is going to stop us from getting Biafra. Absolutely nothing. No Jupiter can, nobody can. So if you present yourself as an agent of the Jew in our land, and you say because of that, you are 70 years old, you are 80 years old, you are coming into Biafra to talk rubbish, we will obliterate you completely. Do you know why? Because everything we do, we do with facts and with reason. Do you know that the, the sponsors of Boko Haram are Fulani people? You also know that Fulani people are the, men, are the officers you have in the Nigerian army. In fact, across the armed forces of the Jews. Now, they came out openly to tell you that we are not going to expose Boko Haram sponsors. This is a, 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 a very bloody terrorist organization that have killed a lot of people. Innocent people. There are over 2 million people in IDP camps as a result of the activities of Boko Haram. But of course, I qualify that. The reason why Boko Haram took up arms is because of the heavy handedness of the Nigerian police. They were the ones that killed Muhammad Yusuf. Before the death of Muhammad Yusuf, Boko Haram wasn't violent. It was the death of Muhammad Yusuf that led to Boko Haram becoming violent. So we must understand that first and foremost, and that is the truth. It doesn't matter how much you demonize Boko Haram. Somebody started it. It doesn't matter what you say about Boko Haram. Somebody caused Boko Haram to pick up arms. The day they came to my house to kill me, had they succeeded, do you think I theory would keep quiet? They would have gone into the bushes. Exactly what is happening in the north. Before you blame Boko Haram, you blame the Nigerian police, and you blame the trigger happy Nigerian army, that is the truth. And now that Boko Haram is killing without mercy, who are those sponsoring them? The Zoom presidency wrote a letter, or should I say, issued a statement saying that IBOB is spending $85,000 every month in order to stain the image of the already battered, useless geological republic. So, they we are concerned. Where do they get their money from? But do you know that they are not concerned about his possible book of IPOB is a peaceful movement. We are not armed. Now, I want somebody to tell me the reason why the army is not prepared, or presidency not prepared to name those who are sponsoring Boko Haram, but they are prepared to be looking for those who are funding IPOB. That is yet to kill anyone. What does that tell you? Under such a climate, not only are Northern elders protecting five terrorist organizations, five, to the point that they are now shipping terrorists to our land to be raping our mothers, abducting our daughters, and cutting us up. After raping us, they cut us into pieces. They brought the light. 
that elder you have in Biafra, that elderly man you have, that elder statesman you have, did not come out to condemn the slaughter of his own daughter. Those who are doing the killing, their own elders are not condemning them. I have never heard of a northern, a northern elder condemn Boko Haram or condemn uh, uh, Asis in West Africa or condemn Miyadiyan. No, never ever. Instead, they brought them into the presidency and empowered them. You went to school as an elder. After seeing all these things that your own counterparts in the north, your own counterparts in the north are not chastising their own children that are coming down to kill us. We that are saying no to these killings. You are the one rising up to be talking rubbish all the time. And we can't spare you. If you keep your mouth shut, we will leave you alone. If you come out to talk rubbish, we will obliterate you. I am telling you, we will vaporize you. That is a promise. Keep to yourself and then see if you will, if you will insult you. No, of course we won't. You don't want. We will not talk about you. But come and tell us nonsense when our people are dying. Then you will see what will happen to you. That was the pledge I made to them. That is why it has been why we cannot expose Boko Haram sponsors from the army. The Nigerian has said that it is not their duty to expose those sponsoring Boko Haram. Can you believe such rubbish? Can you believe such nonsense? <coughs> They admitted that the army knows the people who are heavily backing terrorism and criminality. Yes, they will mention them. Now, all these people that came out to go and organize Python dance, what is your justification? The army, the same army you went to call to come to Islam and to kill people. The same army you called to go to Paul to kill people. The same army you called to kill unarmed people. They are now saying we can't even name those who are sponsoring Boko Haram. What does that tell you about your misplaced and foolish diatribe against IPOB? Did you see it? That is, we are not getting upset with you because you are a human being. No, we are, we are upset with you because you cannot reason very well. You claim you are an elder, you cannot reason very well. How many times have you heard Oduduwa elders condemn OPC, even at the height of OPCs and criminality, when they were fighting police? How many times, I ask you, did an Oduduwa man, an elder statesman from Yoruba land, stand up to condemn OPC? How many? They were fighting police in Lagos. True or false? It's only you people that um, have mouth. It's only you that can write. Stay on your own and we we'll leave you alone. Write rubbish and we we'll feed you to the vultures. Simple as that. It's because we leave you alone. That is why every idiot comes up and they talk rubbish and they go away. They talk nonsense and they and they, they why? But your own daughters have been cut up into pieces. You've said nothing. And you want respect? How is that possible? How, I ask you? How is that possible? Anyway, let Biafra come for DNA test. Then I'll have to do that. And then we'll continue what we are doing. They are, are they going to stop us? Of course not. They can never ever stop us. They cannot stop us. And both of you calling for one zoo, calling for one Nigeria. I'm not a the prophet that said uh, God gave her a message. So she's more than willing to, to express her opinion. But I want you to understand. These are the people you claim are protected. You people, you people don't know you are under a curse. Nigeria is the zoo. Nigeria is a curse. You are so cursed that you don't, you no longer reason. Your brain cells are no longer interacting properly. You can no longer put one and one together to get two. That is why you're a Nigeria, that is why you're a zoo animal, because you don't read it. Are you aware of what is happening in Tarawa? The military, the same military you are hoping and praying is going to save you, are busy raping women and children. So, in Biafra land, the Ajanja weed, they are busy fooling people, raping and killing. In Tarawa, in Tarawa, 
Go there and tell them about one Nigeria. You people don't know the mess the zoo is in. You have no idea. No, you don't. Go to Taraba and talk to them about one Nigeria. They will, they are, they will stone you properly. Go to Taraba and tell them about one Nigeria. Is this all the lies you're reading about in the papers? Who told you they want one Nigeria in Taraba? Who told you that? Do you know what the military are doing? This is the military. Not bandits. Not Miyot Yala with their cattle. Not Miyot Yala with their bombs and their AK-47. Not Ansari. Not ISIS in West Africa. Not al Qaeda in the Maghreb. Not Boko Haram. This is the military. So in, in Taraba State, they are under siege. Everybody is killing and raping them. Ani is raping uh, Janja Weed is, is raping them, bandits raping them, Miguel Tiara is raping them. Everybody is a rapist in Tarab. It is here. According to TV, TV people, these are the people they, they, that said no to restructuring in 1967. They said no. Ojuku was speaking all the grammar in Aburi. They said no. TV people said no, we don't want. We must kill Biafra. We must kill. Today, they are crying. I said to you here on this hallowed platform that everything that Biafra endured, everybody will go through it. Turn this turn by turn. Go on, how far? Go on, how far? How far today? Let me tell you what is happening between the military and people in Taraba State. So that you can wait for one zoo, one night. That is why when I see people talk about one Nigeria, I don't know what to do. To be honest, I the prophetess is I just I just left her because she preaches the Bible. So I just left her. If it was somebody else, I will I will honestly speaking, the if they hear my name next time they run away. I want people that they're talking about one Nigeria. I want to let you understand what is happening in Taiba. So you know. Because sometimes you don't know. So you know, you understand the mess you're in into in the zoo. Some of you do not know the mess you're in. And uh, where is it even go on from? Where is it from? Which 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 tribe is the, is it from? That some people uh, you know we're waiting for them. It's from a place called uh, uh, is it uh, uh, Kan Kanke? Can't think whatever that he said. Okay, he's an Angas or Angas in Plateau State, very close to TV people. Angas. He was the one they used to kill people. Today, his village is also under siege by a against men. But he can no longer speak. He can no longer speak. The TV leaders or TV people from Tarana State. Under the aegis of Thief Cultural and Social Association, have accused the military, Nigeria's military, accused the military that they, they posted the military to come and stop the Fulani Janjaweed from ethnically cleansing TV people from Taraba State. But you know what the military did? This is Zoo newspaper. This is a Nigerian YouTuber, please. They are saying here that they have now accused the military posted to bring peace in Taraba of raping their wives and daughters, also destroying their properties in the name of manhunt for bandits in southern Taraba. You are a Christian in southern Taraba, the bandits from Miyeti Yala who are Muslims. You are attacking and raping Christian women destroying their homes and property. This is from the army or not not um not anybody else. From the army. Raping women. Destroying properties. Entire state. Nigerian army. And people have faith in one Nigeria. I d I don't know the type of planet that these people can I have no idea where they came from. And they say, oh we don't want to fight a war. Nobody wants to fight a war. But sometimes they, they are you telling me you be in your house, somebody will come in, knock on that uh, on the door, as they did to that woman, take your daughter, take your mother, and be raping your mother outside. And you'll be quoting the Bible. Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're telling me? Nigerian soldiers. Is that our armed forces? Our armed forces. They are busy raping women in Taraba. 
Nigerian armed forces busy raping with rape rapists there. After sleeping with cattle, they sleep with human beings. That, that they have all had the disease, of course. The first disease. Haven't you seen them sleeping with cattle? These are terrorists that they feed that they have. The, the only place in the world you bring out the terrorist, you give them army uniform with AK-47. What do you expect? What do you expect, I ask you? What do you expect? What do you expect, I ask you? You're telling me you believe in one Nigeria. In one Nigeria, my foot. One Nigeria, my foot. And my happiness today is that after listening to us, the Hausa people are fighting back. As I speak to you now, the people, they listen to every politician in the radio Biafra. They are now fighting back in the north. Enough is enough. But now, if, imagine this thing had happened in Biafra land. In a place called Zango Kataf and Karolo government area of Kaduna State, they are now facing the houses, they are now facing the Fulani people. And the Fulani are claiming they lost 99 people there. I am telling you, if it were some of our elders now from southern, if we, if we do the same thing to them now that the houses have done to the Fulani, hey, you will see your elders. Hey, stop them. These children, they did not see the war. I am 53 years old. These children, they didn't see the war. They have done nothing. What were they? Hey. Hey, have you had any elder from Zango Kata talk rubbish? Because they are, their youths are fighting back against those killing and raping their women. If it's your job, you see one, one, one idiot in Abuja saying, I am a senior advocate, I'm writing now, then you write. I'm asking them to use their brain. Look at the elders. I'm asking all those um, Biafran elders, all of them across the board, especially the Uber ones. Have you heard anybody now from Zango Kataf, Southern Kaduna, complain about the fight back of their people against the Fulanis? If it is you, you come at me, you rubbish, as always. Doing Facebook um, video, talking nonsense, as always. And that's usual. And you want respect. <laughs> You've got to be dreaming. Keep your mind. If you have nothing to say, just shut up and watch us liberate you from your misery and stupidity. I keep asking them, is there anybody behaving himself that we have ever insulted? If you behave yourself, how can we insult you? It's the only way you bring yourself out as somebody, then I know one of the supposable. We will tell you where to sit immediately. There's a place called Atiyak Chiefdom in Zango Kataf and some Chiefdom in Kaulu, where between June 11 and 13, a corpse of a man was found in a farm in a district that claimed the lives of 448 cows. They took the war to the Fulani people. And now they are running away. That's how you, if you give me one night, call the police are, and the army are raping people. It's who you're going to call. They think we are foolish, of course we are not. And can never ever be. And too many calls today, I will try and, uh, I will try and round up very quickly, maybe take some of your calls. Some of you are calling so much. So, so, so much. So much, so much. You are talking about uh, a restructuring, less restructure. It did not restructure in 67 when every part of the zoo was represented in Aburi. All of them, all the leaders were there. They agreed. Nothing happened. Nothing came of it. Nothing. You had confab after confab after confab culminating in the one Jonathan had in 2014. The foreign state said no. And you said, you still, you're still saying that God told you it's going to happen. When? <laughs> oh dear. Let's continue. Let's continue. And as a consequence and as a result of the unbridled stupidity of those that call themselves Nigerians, 
43% of the total population of poor people in the world will live in the zoo, in the damnable zoological republic. That is the gift of the Fulanese to you. The Fulanese have now given you a gift. 43% of every of the world the global population of poor people will live in the zoo and to other, according to the World Bank this is from the World Bank <laughs> all in Africa uh, no, the three, in three countries actually, in India in Nigeria and in Congo Anywhere you see bad news, you will see the name Nigeria. Anywhere, is, which is to show you that God has never been with Nigeria. Never. God did not create Nigeria. Never did and can never. I don't know why they are, these are, some of them are graduates. I don't know why they struggle to understand this. I don't know why they struggle to understand this. The projection came after the Washington based development lender, the World Bank, said on Monday that the pandemic could drive between 70 to 100 million people into extreme poverty in 2020 as the global economy faces its first recession in 80 years. This is what you get when you put foreign in power. Your life is a complete mess. A complete mess. Yes, as our people are writing from Facebook, Chima, and also, of course, you have attention seekers everywhere. If they don't come to make noise, how are corrupt politicians going to give them money for data? They must make noise. That is who they are. They must make noise. Always, they must make noise. The zoo is going to have their own fair share of poor people all over the world, only in the zoo. Tomorrow they will say, we are Nigerians, and then we are proud. Very, very sad indeed. Let me try and take people. There are people are calling and calling and calling and calling. I don't know if at all they are paying attention. The caller on the phone, can you hear me? The caller on the phone, he cannot hear, he's not paying attention. The caller on the phone, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. Good evening to you. What is your name and where are you calling from? Good evening, my name is Henry Nabuku or Uche Nabuku. I'm calling you from South East London. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'm just so elated tonight, you know, talking to you directly. Um, Mazin Abdikano, you've been a very big inspiration. And um, what you are doing at the moment is what I have always grown up dreaming to do and um but god has called you and all we have to do is to support you and um if you mark my name you will find that um i've always been supporting you i'm supporting you and we're in this battle together so the least we can do is to keep praying for you fighting for you the best we can i'm very happy to talk to you tonight just to encourage you to let you know i know that the spirit of god is with you so it is not that um, i can't do anymore but just to let you know that you are not alone we're all behind you this is what we all want Thank you. Are, you, are you hearing me? Love the world, not just me, the whole world is listening. Over a million people are listening. That I know, for, conservatively speaking, of course. Please go ahead. I'm, I'm very happy talking to you. You are my brother. And, um, you know, I am just so overwhelmed that I can get through to you and actually talk to you directly. I am so happy. And after this, I'll be finding a way to get through to you. There are things that I need to talk to you about, which are not really for, um, you know, general or public. Right, and call back immediately after this very broadcast. You call me back and I will take your call and we shall discuss. Thank you very much. Okay,
Thank you, Papa. Of course, man. Go, please, Babu. Go ahead. Okay. Now, um, about the, your guests tonight, your prophetess guests yes. from the U.S. Our prophetess, not just mine. She belongs to all of us. Okay. All of us. <laughs> okay. All right. Our prophetess guests tonight. First of all, I like to. Um, I appreciate you for being such an open-minded person. You have demonstrated tonight, if, you know, how, that against what people are saying about you, you are open to diverse opinion. You listen to everyone. You're not just imposing, you know, your your beliefs or thoughts, but you know, you listen to all the arguments. Of My view is this. That woman, and a lot of people are like that. You know, I'm not trying to discredit anyone, but people, people, um, kind of like reason something out, have an opinion, and they want to put it on God to give it some weight. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> now, is, is that what you think? Is that what you think she's doing? Well, I am hundred percent sure about that. See, in the Bible, God never used any prophetess. There is no woman prophet in the Bible. Read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You will not find one. What they will tell you when you ask them is that, oh, what about Deborah? Deborah was a judge, not a prophet. And when God appointed Deborah as a judge over Israel, he said to them that it was as a punishment to the men of Israel who were disobedient to him. So that you know that it wasn't really in God's plan that a woman should be a prophet. Do you understand? Yeah, I'm, I'm listening um, to you. I, I'm not I'm not a theologian, so I'm not an expert in that very field. Okay. But I'm willing to but learn I'm from you, to... please. Teach me, I want to learn. Without, without prejudice to our prophetess guest tonight, a lot of religious jobbers, that's what I call them, they are jobbers, right, would, you know, reason out something or think of something, think an alternative to Biafra which they are scared of. I know these people very well, believe me. I know them very well. They are so scared of Biafra and they are thinking, Okay, what is the alternative? What next alternative can we offer them? Uh, and by the way, you are you are actually right. You are actually right. The, the the prophetess was a title that was given in recognition, not that the by because it is actually in um in parentheses. So not that you have somebody called a prophetess. Nobody was called a prophetess. That, I, that, I, I've seen it prophet. now. Nobody was called. It's just a term of endearment. No, there is no such thing. I can tell you that. They have all these followers and you know all that because our people, or should we say their people, are just such people who are always looking for the easy way out of everything. You know, they have this escapist attitude where they just believe in this ecclesiastical, uh, you know, divine intervention in their life. So whoever puts themselves forward as coming from God, you know, they all, you know, go there and, you know, just obey them and listen uh, to them. Uh, can I ask you a question? I believe you go to work every day. Is that correct? Are you a student? Are you, do you go to work? Well, I am a compliance consultant. Mm -hmm. I'm a lawyer. Oh, very good. By training. Now, now, if you don't go to I'm work, lawyer, will you get paid? Sorry, what did you say? If you don't go to work, will you get yes. paid? Will you get paid? If you don't work, will of you get paid? You will. Of course you will. You will not. No. You will not get paid. So, so, so that even though God has a plan for you, has a job for you, you actually need to go to work in order for you to get paid. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. I'm just asking. Just asking. It's you're, right. you're right. You're absolutely correct. But here, well, in Nigeria or, you know, Niger area, they don't want to work to get paid. So whoever can tell them that they can get paid without working, 
you know, they will they will all come to that person, and the person will end up, you know, <laughs> taking from them. But I didn't dispute that. Exactly. But it's not easy. That's right. what's that's what's going on there. So I'm talking to you, my, my dear brother. Please talk to me again after this very program. Let me take this very call that is coming. Try and speak about this program. The caller on the line, can you hear me? He is not paying attention. The caller on the line, can you hear me? For the last time, can you hear me? No, they're not paying attention. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? The caller on the phone is not paying attention. The next caller, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, please, your name and where you're calling from? Uh, my name is um, Obin Nawampo. I'm calling from London. Hey, you people have broken up in the UK all of a sudden. Please go ahead, Obin. The world is. Uh, yeah, uh, Namde, I, I'm very proud of you, uh, you. because I'm, fr I'm from all my heart. Oh, uh, wonderful. A blessed yeah. land. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, yes. I'm very proud of you. And um, just in continuation to what the earlier caller said, that woman has Rasputin spirit. They always go. Please take it on her, please. I I happen to 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 um, I don't know. She she came and she spoke very well. So I do have yeah, this. Yeah, the, the the Rasputin spirit I'm referring to <laughs> is those who go to to the Tsar. Always they have something from God, and um, that shouldn't be the case. What we are pursuing is logical, is straightforward, is one plus one is two. Yes. Uh, it, it, that is what we are looking at. It's not um, what God is going to do. God is not going to miraculous. Freedom is free. But in the history of mankind, mankind has fought for freedom at each point. However, it's free. But we must okay, fight. you're saying that freedom is free, but you still have to fight for it. You still have to fight for it. In all, uh, in, in, even in, in Cuba, it took five years, uh, uh, five years plus for them to get the, uh, a Cuban revolution. You still have to fight for freedom. It's not just free, but you still have to fight to obtain freedom. But, but so, let me ask you, let's have this conversation now. Uh, do you think that, let, let's put it this way, so anything designed to kind of, um, um, do you believe that even within the present condition of the zoo, that any devolution of power is some kind of freedom fighting as well. Do you believe in that? Uh, no. Even it's not. No. It is not. No, it would never work. Okay. Go ahead. Re restructuring would never work. Restructuring is not the part of freedom that will liberate Nigeria. Everyone got to go back to their region, to their, their villages, to their hamlets, to build from the bottom up. Oh, okay. If in the future, if people decide by way of enlightenment and an and attainment, if people decide to join together, it, it let them decide in the future. But at the current moment, freedom means total freedom. So it is a focus we have, ought to have. And um, your, your broadcast, I, I always rush whatever, whatever I'm doing to listen to it. We got to be focused to freedom, and there is not just. I have a lot of uh, people from Odudua, very important uh, men in, in in England. When I speak to them, they, what they said to me, what Nandi has been saying, is absolutely true. They, whatever Nandi says is correct. In, in fact, we are making more inroads within Odudua and other, even the houses that we are making is like we are becoming a bit stagnant within uh, the Biafran region, but the the message is getting deeper and deeper in Odudua, in the north, and even in Ghana, Ghanaians, the people are opening their eyes. So keep to, to what you're doing. That is the right track. We can never lose focus. The, the, the zoo is shaking. It is it's not easy, isn't it? It is by it is rocking. It, it is rocking oh, because the speed is growing. It is rocking. It's shaking. So we can never lose focus. People who want to want Nigeria, 
when everything is set and done, they can go back to wherever they but want. But you're comfortable in England. Why would somebody as comfortable as you are in England be concerned about freedom back in Biafra land? Why? Why don't you just give up and say, like those in some of them in Abuja and Lagos, and say, uh, to hell with it, I'm in England? Because my homeland is Biafra. That is where my ancestors were born. That is my homeland and the freedom of my people, the freedom to go to their farmlands, the ancient farmlands, to go to, in my dialect, they call it go to Uhuhu and go to ancient home is it, something that it is our right and we can never lose sight of that. England, my children and my grandchildren are not English. As much as we are born here, they are raised here, but still there is a place called Uhuhu. You to understand what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, yes. Homestead, where you come from, yes. Is the, the, your roots, where you came from. So, that is why we must fight for Biafra to come to pass. Thank you very much, my dear brother. I am very grateful. Thank you very, very much for that. The caller on the line, can you hear me now? Somebody's on the line, they don't speak. Can you hear me? Plus seven. Can you hear me? Not serious. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Yes, um, good evening, I can hear you. Mr. Martin, I'm just standing here. Thank you. Please raise your voice. Come away from your system and raise your voice, please. Your name and where you're calling from? Okay, my name is um, Isioma Emmanuel Ejimadu, um, Anele. I am from Imo State. Um... Hello. I'm listening to you. The world is listening. Please go ahead. We are all listening to you. Hello. Go ahead. Yes. I've been trying to reach you. Even um, the other day, I tried to call in, but I couldn't um, get to because um, there's a lot of um, callers. Um, I'm calling today just to um, make a point um, on what the um, prophet has um, said. <laughs> um... I listened very carefully to what she said. I, first of all, sorry to, um, sorry to, um, take it back. Right. I live in France, in Po. So I, I, I am a singer songwriter. I sing in, um, in a church. And I see a lot of, um, people who call themselves prophetess here. And most of these people, they are Yorubas and all that. What she said, she might, um, be correct on her own part, but I want to clarify something. There is nothing like prophetess, even in my Bible. Are you serious? Are you, yes. But it's not about, about this um, um, very uh, part in, in Exodus, where, where it says, and, and, and Miriam prophesied, and Miriam prophesied. Is that a different translation? Is this That's a translation? Yes. Or is it That's translation? a different that's a different translation, uh, translation. Miriam prophesies, like you can prophesy to yourself what you want, like you can prophesy, I want this, I want this. That, that's not a prophetess thing. Miriam prophesies. It's a different translation. Now, this woman that has come to say those things, all we want is Biafra. We want Biafra to come. We don't want restructuring for one Nigeria. This thing she saw is at the past. I will put it on her that. She might have seen something from the devil because devil also uh, give visions. Oh. Devil give uh, bad <laughs> visions to people of God. Yes, devil does that because if it is from God truly, God will send it to people, someone like you who is a freedom fighter. God will send that same vision to the to the to the Nigerian government who are the bad, bad people. God will send that vision to someone or maybe to Aisha Buhari so that he will open their eyes and see if this, we will tell them that this is what I want, this is what should have been, this is what but I They have seen it, my dear sister. They have seen the vision. They have seen exactly. that vision is division. The vision they are seeing is division. And that's exactly. what they're running from. That's exactly. what they don't want to social media. They don't want exactly. anything to tamper with this view. They are seeing exactly. the vision and that vision is Decision. Go ahead. Exactly, sir. So that woman, uh, to me, I think is wrong. What she saw was not the correct thing. What she should be seeing now, that's why I made the comment. She should go back and pray and ask God to, to show her correctly what she saw because that is not the real thing. What she should be seeing now is Biafran freedom and how Nigeria is going to be destroyed because with, God is at the edge that because God doesn't, he has turned back on Nigeria already. 
because I see it also in my visions also. I see things about Nigeria, which I can't come on, I mean, I don't want to be saying it, but I know that that is not the right thing from God. So we shouldn't listen to that woman, because some people are like that. I'm sorry to say, I'm not castigating her. Some people are like that. They all use charms and juju to do all this prophetess thing, and, you know, just to get money from people, to prophesize to you, to t they tell you this, you become this. That is all a lie. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Baja Sister. Thank you very, very much for that. And I hope now, if I may say, the caller on the line, can you hear me? I have a caller on the line, can you hear me? No. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm having I can hear you. My Thank you very I'm much. Calling from, I'm calling from Las Vegas, never From Las Vegas. In Abaca, Las Vegas. Are you doing gambling? Yeah. I can't do it. I'm not gambling. 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 Please, your name once again, if you may. My name is Tim Odizio. Odizio, welcome. Thank you very much. Please, Brian. Yes, I quote our prophet and state. If God so loved Nigeria, he gave his only begotten son, go on, go on. Even our brother, even our brother, Jonathan. This kind of law of nine. You guys are not going to be allowed for this. This is the problem we are fighting for. Two middle type of people are most threatened. One, our political leaders, two, our religious leaders. No matter the front they come with, no matter the name they come with, prophetess or bishop or his royal highness or his only of holies, whatever thing they come with, they are threatened because of. They have laid too much foundation on. They have they've been they've been ripping they've been ripping off our political leaders have been ripping off. We will cry to them. They will take the little ones we have in the name of tithe and, and seed and offering. So they are they are most threatened. Now people talking about the structuring because of like I, I commented on a massive uh, uh, post today. They've been talking about because of this structuring they killed five million five million Biafran people in 1967. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yes. Yeah. They, they, they are still talking about the structure. Uh -huh. And I asked them after how many years. So, after how many years? After years? Fifty three years. After fifty three years. After death, after death. After killing five million people, confirmed, after confirmed. Constitutional conference. Everything. Even twenty fourteen here. Yeah, only yesterday. Yes, he hasn't come. And yet yeah, God wants to give 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 us something. At this level, we're not supposed to be deceiving ourselves. They've used that word to deceive us to delay us for a very long time. We're no longer going to stand for that word. You want to restructure your country, or that just have a structure? How can you build it? How can you restore? How can you? How can you build? So you want to build it a three bedroom flat on the bungalow? You first of all scatter the bedroom flat and start to build a foundation that will carry a, a three bedroom a three bedroom flat. You scatter the bungalow and build a foundation that will carry carry the three bedroom flat. You can't build a three bedroom flat on top of a foundation of bungalow. It will collapse. So there is no structure to be restructured. Now you're talking about uh, 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 restructuring because of restructuring. Sovereign, common sovereign national conference that was not, they were not even supposed to, to touch every part. So just, it was meant to aid a little part of the structure. They, they vowed that they would, they would, they would, they would, they would dismantle Jonathan. They chased him Jonathan because of him calling for sovereign national conference. How does that make sense to anybody? There is common, small common electoral reform that they ask them. Reform an electoral reform now so that people can vote from any part of the world so that they can have their accountability. So that when, when they are after election within one hour, they are the result to be announced. Common electoral reform. They cannot do that one. Now you're talking about a whole restructuring. You're talking about them. They've put in us, they've changed us, they've gotten us where they want us. So, so what you're saying is that even the simple things they can do to make life better they cannot do it. Talk less of a much more bigger thing that will bring freedom to people. To people common electoral common common electoral reform. Common time this little one they cannot do it and you're talking about collapsing a a a a the nation the structure who did they take away the oil work from Dan Tata take away the oil work from uh Iraqi that them that is the structure we're talking about you take taking away the oil work from them I want to restructure that you want to sit and listen to you you want to you want you want to give start a sound region a, 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 a economic economic independence that is the structure we're talking about. It cannot work. It can never work. Nobody is talking about the structure. We're talking about a total decimation, total destruction of that evil jungle, evil forest they call a country. After the structure of independence, there's no electricity. There's no common running water. You want to destruction. Restructure what? Prophet has come and give prophet. Uchile ke, 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 uch Prophecy, prophecy, we have decimated our prophecy here. 
My thank you so much. God bless what you've been doing. Thank you very much. I bless you too, my dear brother from Nevada, from Las Vegas. But he is not in a casino gambling away his life. He is working very, very hard to sustain himself and his family and also to support this very effort we are making to free everybody. I saw somewhere in the Bible of Makaria Mama, I saw somewhere, and Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron. I don't understand this one anymore. This is another, because I've been going through the various, um, um, what's it called, translations. That is why if they can harmonize all these things to make life easier. In some Bibles, uh, there is no female um, prophetess, depending on the church you're going to. And in some other ones, they are around. So they need to harmonize this, so to be very clear. I'm looking at it here. I think Exodus 15, um, 20. And Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron. This is another translation. It's also, oh my goodness, it's so confusing sometimes. Thank you very much. I don't know who else is on the line. People are calling today. Let us try and take their calls if they want to speak to us. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Yes, please, your name and where you're calling from. Thank you very much. My name is Namde Mwako. I'm calling from Iguacha. From Iguacha, our capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. sir. I've been listening to what the prophetess has been saying. And <laughs> frankly speaking, I'm not convinced anywhere of what everything that she has said. So you, you can't see, you can't take away anything from what she said. You don't believe her? Yes, I don't. I, one bit, not not even a single word from her, because I don't understand why God will allow. Let, let me let me let me say this. Let me say this. These are not. Let me say that the other did not die, but five million people died. Why will God allow five million people, the innocent people, children? I have seen the children, innocent children from. A year, two years, and five years, and seven years. What are their offense? That God will allow them to die, to, to, to suffer such, such pain. I'm so pained in my heart. Because I don't know, why would God allow such thing? I, 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 I have a time to send a message to know that, to, to ask her, does human being create a nation? Just answer the simple question. I've not seen, I've googled, I've searched in YouTube, in Google to know if there's a place that human beings will, will, will create a nation. I've not seen that sort answer. The, the, the it, does, it doesn't exist. God, there is nowhere in the history of man except Africa that a human being can come oh, and be credited with it. Do you know what insult that is? Do you know how insulting it is? Oh my goodness. That a man, a trans human being, created a country for you. Hey, come on. That's terrible. I, 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 was, I, was, I was so ashamed for her to even speak of such. Because I don't understand in a place where a, 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 in Africa we, 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 we exalt, we exalt insult. We exalt it in a way that I think, I think God, God, how, 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 how can I, how can I, how can I be bearing a name that a prostitute, a concubine, not even a wife, not even a wife, but a concubine of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, of a murderer, will give me, and I can never accept this name. I can never ever accept this name. It, 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 I, 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 I don't know how to, how to comprehend this. I have, I have, I have respect in, after all of it, I have respect everywhere, but I, 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 I don't see where a human being has written nation. Now, he's telling us that we should allow, we should allow the, the, the God to, to, uh, our God, not my own God, not, not only him, to, 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 to take care of every other saboteur, maybe the, the, the people that are fighting against us. The same people are people, are butchering our sisters, our mothers, sharing their path in, 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 in forest. I was a witness, I, I'm telling you, when I was seven years old, I was a witness to a, an attempted rape to my own mother. Hey, your own mother? Hey, well, yeah, I, I, my, I, I'm telling you this. The, 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 if, if I were in the elevated palace this night, I said my own mother, we, 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 we lived in the north, we, we lived in Papa, in the north. We went to, we went to buy, we, we went to a, 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 a village 
to buy the leaf because that's what that was, that was my, my mother's business. A full animal that, that was supposed to cross, cross the, a, a particular a particular river, just a small river. The, but the man just stood there, we are staring at my mother, just directly into her eye. Yeah. She was, she, 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 the woman could not cross, and the man could not cross. So when, when the man went across, she, she, with his knife, she attempted to rape my, my, my own very first. I have seven years old that I have been. I know how I thought, I know, I, 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 I understand, my dear brother. I, I understand what you're saying completely and totally. I do understand, and thank you very much for calling. There was a sister of ours on my Facebook page, actually. Ngozi uh, she made a comment. She said, she said that uh, Mbaka is also a prophet. Uh, he predicted that things will be good with the coming of uh, Buhari. <laughs> hey, God. People are me. <laughs> Mbaka is also a prophet. This is from UK. They are everywhere this evening. They call on the phone. Can you hear me? They call on the phone. Can you hear me? I wish they can. They call on the phone. Can you hear me? No. They call on the phone. Can you hear me? Please, your name and where you are calling from. My name is Onye Kachiwa Kweze. I am calling from Toronto, Canada. Thank you. Please join. Maze, my able leader, I will start today by saying a word of prayer first for you. And my prayer is for you is, when you move from one nation to the other, God will suffer no man to harm you. Yes, Every door that you knock that will be productive in the coming of Biafra will open wide for you. Yes, now, I want to say just two things for the sake of time. Number one is that I want to appreciate the fact that you took to this program, to the Suman Borum, the highest, the peak, by allowing somebody who is not even a Biafra to talk, especially somebody who goes by the name Prophetess. It goes a long way to demonstrate the fact that we, in IPOB, are very democratic in nature and we welcome opinions, especially when they are very constructive. Of course. Mazi, for the woman who said, uh, the prophetess, I may say, that uh, made her own submission, you know, is not, is for me, I welcome everybody's opinion. But sometimes we also tend to look at what people their opinion means to what we are doing. You know, her own, whatever God showed her, whatever she saw, whatever she heard is an aberration to what we are doing. And personally, I don't welcome it. Because somebody wrote succinctly and said, what God revealed to people's general, the Megu Juku, as far back as 1967, is what the prophetess is saying in 2020. Wow. My visionary leader, this is a, bel a, bel a belated vision, wow. because the Biafra of 1967 can never be the same as the Biafra of 2020. Right. Rather, it is a bitter reminder of the irreconcilable mistake of the zoological leaders. We are many years ahead of the enemies, so forward ever and backward never. We will never go back. Amazing. This, person was, this thing was written by Kazi Azubike, mm -hmm. and my last Hey, where are you? Don't tell me this line has crashed again. Has it? Hello? I think it has. It has crashed again. It crashed before. So I can hear you, my leader. Oh, go ahead. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Yes. My last submission is, please, to this program is an unusual one because the kind of contributions I've heard today I've not been able. I've not. Uh, uh, I've not only learned from you. I've learned from many contributors. Me and I've, I've, I've learned from all of you. Even the last one yeah. you said. <laughs> Remember, our brother here said you cannot have restructuring where there is no structure. I mean, no structure. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. 
please, please, Marzi, please, use this platform to appeal to our people, not to only wait until you come on. Uh, we have r various radio stations that they can call and educate us. The two people that spoke from London, they are very seasoned professionals. Yes. You know, every other person that has spoken has spoken very well. We need them to come to our radio, the USA radio, the South Africa, the Biafra land, and talk to our people. This platform is a citadel of learning. Please, may Chukwu Kikabiyama continue to bless you. Whenever you speak, may you speak wisdom to us. Yes. And when we hear, may we not be only hearers, but also doers of the word. He thank say, you and God bless you. Hey, watch it again. He said, he said, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for that. I am, the quality of colors we are having today is uh, just am amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's unbelievable. You cannot have, please, can somebody post this on my page, please? I don't know his name. Oh, I wish I knew his name. Just say it from a corner. You cannot have restructuring where there is no structure. Does Nigeria have any structure? I don't think so. I do not think so at all, at all, at all. Don't tell me this phone has crashed. It's, it's, it's absolutely pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. It keeps crashing. I don't want to do bad market for them. Uh, for iPhone, but um, they're not doing very well. The car on the phone, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Marcy, good evening, sir. Good evening to you. Your name and where you're calling from? I am from somewhere, Ernest. I'm in Yechuku, I'm calling from Dakarta. Your name is your Yechuku, not your, your Igbo name. I don't want to hear that again. Who the hell are you? All these English names, they make me sick. Your name is your Yechuku, please go ahead. Sir, um, please, uh, I want to thank you for all the privilege that you have given both uh, Biafras and non Biafras. But um, my very opinion to what uh, the so-called prophet has said that, uh, is that uh, I don't want to hear such a thing again. If God sent her a message like she planned, or God revealed something to her, why don't she post threats to the Yoruba kingdom and to the Asherah? To the present place or whoever that is in Asher up there, why don't she reveal the same thing to them? Why don't she talk to them? Must it be you and must it be now that we are ahead of things, that we are about to embrace, that she will walk up to offer such an offer? To me, um, I don't value such a thing because uh, she has no idea what Biafra have gone to. And what the Eastern Region people has ever gone through since 1960, to date. Now, the so-called, the same God that she claimed she had from, I want to know, does this God support God? No. Does this God support the killing and the um, humiliation of human beings, the one he created or he created in his own image? I don't think so. So, why God support the same thing? And why would God reveal such a thing to her? That people will be raped, murdered, and slaughtered, even the same people that are God's own children, preachers of the God's the, the God world, according to great like maybe some of those red brothers who are being slaughtered, are they not men of God? Does even that they support the God men to be slaughtered? I know. I wonder why some people, I wonder why some people behave and believe in her. If she, if she, if she, if she is to come and say such a thing to receive us, we are more than, we are more than ahead of our own thing, our, our own thoughts. I, I, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't go that far. And thank you very much, my dear, but I wouldn't go that far to say she was paid. No, she's just giving her opinion, which we respect, but respectfully also disagree with. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening to you. Your name, please, and where you're calling from, if you may. My name is uh, Emeka Oafo. I'm calling from Gothenburg, Sweden. Gothenburg, Sweden. Please go ahead. Uh, I have two things to say to you, sir. Please say it. Uh, we don't like to mention about uh, the woman that's spoke on the platform today because everybody has his, his or her own opinion and I uh, wouldn't like people to give her more attention because 
if you know in spirit and if you see in spirit, you know that everything has uh, come to conclusion about Biafra. Uh, I, this is her own opinion, and uh, everybody, if you understand, as Bible made us to understand, everybody is a small God. God speaks to everyone. So that shouldn't be a topic. Yeah, you, if you listen to what I was commenting on uh, when you were uh, speaking to her, I mentioned something. I said, you want to get me angry by, you know, but I, uh, all of a sudden I said, anyway, we are practicing democracy. That's all. Yeah, that democracy, means, you uh, must uh, listen, yes. listen to people. Even those you disagree with, you must listen. You must learn to listen to those you disagree with. That is the essence of democracy. Of yes. Of course, sir. So I am saying all these things to tell you, sir, that uh, we are praying and we are uh, what we are educating our people is the most important thing. Because our people don't research. They believe on what people do, but you, they don't research. Because every time you come on air and you say something, I go to my table, I research and say, yes, what you are saying is right. So, and I speak to my people. Don't ever believe anything that someone is telling you. Try to do your own research and come up with facts and figures. That is whom we are. So, as you are educating us and giving us all these uh, uh, facts, it's making it awaken the spirit of dear friends. Those that don't, don't want to know are now go in, going into researching. So, I am praying for you that, that God should give you more strength to carry on this struggle. Because I know that you have a lot to do. Yes, because when you liberate us, you liberate the, 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 the soul of the Biafra. Not just that you, we, are, we got the freedom. No. But when you liberate our soul by reasoning like a Biafra, you know, you have done a, a great job. So please, sir, continue doing what you are doing. Right. God will be with you, sir. He yes, said, yes, thank you very much for that. Thank you very, very much. Let us see, maybe take one or two more calls and we call it a day. The caller on the line, can you hear me? No, he's not paying attention. Not paying attention. Can you hear me? The caller on the phone, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, please. Go ahead, your name and where you're calling from. It's so calling from Sweden. From Sweden, please go ahead. Yes. And director, what I want to chip in, because every time people are talking about uh, we should not disrupt a uh, religion, like what the prophet has said, when she was saying it, I was so angry, I will tell you the truth. I was like, these people, I have never seen anybody that came to, because all the people that have been protestant in the United States, or giving a uh, vision or dream, they had. Concerning the other, have never said, said such a thing. According to what you answered her, you told her that the mouth of people is the mouth of God. And so many people have prophesied for the other and freedom of the other. She is the only one that, even from that your back part, they have many prophets or many pastors or many reverends, they have said such a thing that only what they have seen is a bloodshed and after the vision and everybody will be on his or her own. And everybody will have his or her own freedom. She's the only one that I have seen that came out saying that she saw. But what I'm asking myself when she was saying all this is, has this one ever been in the northern part of Nigeria? Because if this one has been in the northern part of Nigeria, even before the, this whole scenario that is happening now, coming down to the east, you will see that our people that are living there, every minute of their life, every day of their life, they are living in fear. When I went there, for one year I sat there, I was like asking myself, why are you people comfortable where you are living in fear? Now, that same fear that they are living in, in the north, is the one that they have pushed down and moved down to the house. And even when you from here, when that home, you will be living in fear in your house, you will be afraid in the night what will happen. Because it's happening now, even in my own village where I'm coming from. The, the, the break, the, the last year when I went home, one one they caught, one one they caught his head and they left one one, the same two animals. 
And these people, all these people that are prophesizing about one Nigeria, they don't prophesize a new solution. These people always set out to prophesize. That is what I have seen about them. They only see the problem, 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 no solution. But I know one thing in the Bible, even Jeremiah, even Isaiah, they prophesize doom that this is what is coming to the people of Israel, uh, Israelites. That if they don't repent, that is the solution. Repent and seek the choice of God, and this will happen, and everything will be normal. But all these prophets that are going about, when you say, don't talk about Christianity, don't talk about religion, we will talk about it. The day you talk about Christianity, I was, because you have stopped talking about this for a long time, even before, I think after your, before, after the detention, when you came out, you never said something about religion. And I need you to emphasize about it, because our people, uh, our people are now using religion to do people. Because as far as I'm concerned, then this one is not too super cardiac. The person that talks to you is not super cardiac. It's another God. We don't know the God because any God can talk to you. And you will come out and tell us. So many people have prophesied out of 90% and 10% was out of 100%. And 10% was telling us that God told them that there will be not one Nigerian. Then which, who, who are we going to follow? We are going to follow the 90% that told us the truth. Because we know that the majority didn't carry the vote. We know that the mouth of God is not of man. So, for me, we will be talking about religion, telling them that all these prophets of doom coming out from everywhere, saying whatever they want. We know that what we always say about in that country is freedom and nothing but freedom for every nation under that country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, I have learned something else from you, my dear sister. All our callers this evening are just superb. What she said is very simple. So if our dear prophetess is telling us from New York, is telling us that she saw a vision where uh, God said don't divide Nigeria. How about all the other multitude of prophets that have been saying to us uh, that God said Nigeria has already been divided? So who do we follow? Who do we follow? Let us take this very call. Um, the caller on the phone, can you hear me? Is it you stay where you are? Is it you stay where you are? Let us take the caller on. Uh, let us. Is this funny? Is that correct? It's Obama Samson, mother of Chukwu. Please go ahead. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Seneca. Please go ahead. I'm from Amandoba. Amandoba, beautiful, beautiful place. place. Wonderful people. Go ahead, please. I'm calling about the prophecy. Of the woman, of the lady. Hey, now, according to, uh, <laughs> according to, um, uh, uh, Eva, there is one, um, there is one lady from Oduduwa. She got herself a, a pastor. She is in support of the situation of Nigeria. Let Biafra go, let Fulani go, and let the middle bed go. And she said, whoever, that supports one Nigeria, he or she is a, is a demon. Did somebody say that? Did a prophet say that? Yes. Yes, a pastor. Oh, okay. She called herself a pastor. She said that any, any time that she preached against, against what is going on in Nigeria, so many pastors, so many of them, you said they have to stop, but she cannot stop. She is going to say the truth. That's nothing but the, the truth. That she's not after the offering or the, or the, or the private jet or whatsoever. Many pastors, they're having a private jet, which is very, very bad. And my complaint again, many, many, many hospitals in, in Nigeria, the federal government used to give them two hundred thousand. Now, where, where you are? Stay. The, the, where where you are? Let us take this call. Stay. Remember where you are, please. The caller on the phone. Can you hear me? And please, what is your name and where are you calling from? If I may ask you. I'm calling from United States of America, Texas, precisely. And I'm from Umbise, Adam Bise, one of Umbise, Florence, <laughs> David Brett. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sir. Please go ahead. We are in support of you. God, if you're not shocking, we are praying for you. Thank you. Everybody, all my family, we are here watching your life. Thank you. 
America, those in everywhere in the UK, everywhere, so hot in Australia. That's who we are. Formidable and unstoppable. We have respect for divergent views, but we are set on accomplishing this very mission that Chuko Kikabiyama said this very generation must accomplish. And that is why we are unstoppable. Unstoppable. Our march is relentless. And freedom is the ultimate goal. It doesn't matter what the devil does. It doesn't matter what darkness does. It doesn't matter what gossipers do. In fact, I welcome it and I love it. When I go into social media and I see IPOB everywhere, hey! I'm so happy. Because every publicity is good publicity. Very, very important. And that is why we have preached this very gospel this evening to remind everybody that the zoo is unsalvageable because, as our brother said, you cannot have restructuring when there is no structure. Another one said, what Ojuku saw 53 years ago, a vision Ojuku saw 53 years ago, people are not just seeing it now. That restructuring that Ojuku did not bring, that Abui, that go on failed to implement that same restructuring that confab after confab never delivered. Is it now that the Janjaweeds are in power with no but no president? And by the way, has anyone seen him? Has anyone seen him? You know, I'm giving them a false sense of security. I just want them to think I've forgotten, and then I'll leave them very hard and below the belt this time around. They think we've forgotten. They are dreaming. But I thank each and every one of you. I thank our dear sister, Prophet Sushibajo from Bronx in New York. We thank each and every caller, every listener, wherever you are. Somebody just reminded me. I said a million people because by the time this program is over, if you give it two more hours, you will hear or you will know that nearly two million people have been reached. And out of that, nearly a million would have listened just via my page. I'm not talking about YouTube. I'm not talking about FM. I am not talking about satellite television. And I'm not talking about Radio Biafra app or tuning or, or Radio Garden and the rest of it. Everywhere around the world, people are waiting to embrace our freedom. And that is why we say that here, there is no subject that we cannot broach. There is nothing we cannot discuss. But I must say to our people that respect is reciprocal. Keep your mouth shut and nobody will talk about you. 
As for respect, we shall respect those that deserve it because, again, respect is reciprocal. If they respect us, we respect them. Respect for our elders in our DNA. We must respect those who respect freedom. We cannot respect those that keep telling us short of our enemies. That is why our resoluteness can never be questioned. Allow me to repeat. We shall respect our elders. Yes, because I too, I am an elder. Uh -huh. So we respect those who are older than us and those who are younger than us, but not when we are misbehaving. If I misbehave any day, I don't expect you to give me any respect. I expect hatred and venom in return. I don't even deserve pity. Because I know I would never fail. I know I would never be impossible. Impo From now till the kingdom come, impossible. I can never. Impossible. I know you be a Because I know my mission on this very earth. That is why we proclaim with every certainty, with every assuredness, and every conviction for those who do not know that to us Biafra is much more than even freedom itself. Biafra is beyond the comprehension of mere mortals. To us, this family, this IPOB, Biafra is in fact our religion. And here on radio, Biafra is where we worship because Chukotika Biama Prumi Yenine Elohim Adonai El Shaddai is our God from me from here it is good evening.